So, Adrienne, are you in charge? No, absolutely not. No? I don't know what Well, I'm doing. not. I'm not in charge. It, it, I think the idea is it's to advertise the evening of celebration of your work, which is on the 19th of March, Friday. Because Whose you, idea was that? I think it was Daphne. You know? Daphne. Daphne Alexa Pulu. Yes. Well, okay. can you, I can't say her name. Alexa Pulu. Alexa Pulu. I've been I've been working on it for some time, but I think I've mastered it. I couldn't. I would not be able to spell it, mind you. No, I can spell anyway. it. Anyway, say it. Right. Oh, okay. Let's get this show on the bloody road. Right. I think the idea is that I kind of talk to you. I'm going to step in here as the host and try and get this show on the road. This is a teaser interview for a Zoom use event coming up this coming Friday of Emmanuel Williams's poetry. For the past several years, I've been an admin of the Facebook page called Subit Creative. And until I got involved last year hosting Zoom Muse poetry events, this was how I knew Emmanuel. He has been for years one of the most prolific posters on Subit Creative. Besides the number of posts, it's the range of Emmanuel's output that is so striking. From puns to riddles to poems to wanting to start a t-shirt business, the stuff just seems to pour out of and this is just Facebook. Occasionally, there's a hint of the several book projects that Emmanuel always seems to have on the go. And let's not forget YouTube, where Emmanuel has an impressive number of short videos posted. It seems that almost every time he goes outside for a walk in nature, he gets inspired. He's mastered the technology to combine shots of nature with an audio soundtrack of music he's performing, and sometimes that includes his poetry as well. All in all, that's extremely impressive. And that doesn't mention the Zoom Use Poetry events, which Emmanuel began last year at the start of the pandemic shutdown. But I think Emmanuel and Adrian have settled down a bit, so we'll go back to them and let them take it from here. Hello, my name is Emmanuel Williams, and I'd like to take this opportunity of inviting you to uh, a Zoom Muse on March the 19th, Friday, March the 19th, um, which will feature work by me. This is I believe a tribute to me because of the uh, work that I've been putting, I put in in the early stages of View Zoom Muse to get it going, which has been going. And I'm very happy, and almost surprised to be able to say this, Zoom Muse has been going for very nearly a year, which is wonderful. I think it's a wonderful series. What's really interesting about you, though, is the span of your work and, and, and over many, many years. So you not only write riddles and dialogues, you do wonderful poetry workshops for kids of all ages right across the spectrum. And um, I'd like you to say a little bit about that. So quite important. My first teaching um, gig was with elementary school kids in London in 1964. And we decided to do a whole series of poems about the creation of the earth. So there were kids who wrote about the, how it was when the first rain came and when the first rabbit crawled out of a hole and when the first tree grew up and looked around for other trees to be part of. And um, it was as though this stream of beautiful, wonderful, creative poetry just came flowed across my desk every day. And 
it was to me, it was as a completely new teacher, it was a revelation as to what there is within children if you give them a chance to open their doors and show you, let it come out. In fact, we did a whole series of um, super move, uh, super eight video uh, films of these poems with uh, set settings that we created for them and then presented it to the whole school and to all of the parent, the parents who came and watched it in the assembly hall. And it was absolutely wonderful. And the neat thing is that three years ago, I was in, in um, England staying with a friend of mine, Sherry Finn Gardner. There was a lady in the kitchen doing some work. He's a minor aristocrat. And I heard him call her and say, are you okay, Mrs. Morgan? And I said to him, I had a, a student in my first year as a teacher whose name was Dinah Morgan. And the woman in the kitchen said, is that you? Is that Mr. Williams? And she came out and I said, are you Dinah Morgan? And she said, yes. And we gave one another this huge wow. hug. And she said to me, you were the best teacher I ever had. And I quoted to her the lines from the poem that she wrote about rain. And it was such a moment. Mm -hmm. And I, I spent 50 years teaching kids, teenagers and college students. And one of the themes, one of the one of my strengths, one of my skills, one of my huge, one of my passions was to unlock that door yeah. and invite the child, the teenager, the student to show me what's inside. And oh, it was absolutely wonderful. I haven't done that for two or three years and I really miss it, but that was, that was that's, that's really the, the main theme and story of my life. There you go. Thank that you. Certainly has. Emmanuel, is there any chance of you giving us a poem right now? <clears throat> as a taster of what's to come. You've oh got, gosh, you've got you mean there. the, uh, the you've... poem that Dinah Morgan wrote? No, well, you, which, uh, just a poem from you, just to say, this is who I am. Just a poem, you want a poem? You yeah. would like a poem? I would like okay. a poem, please. Okay, here's a poem. One of my area, one of the things that I write poems about, and things is the wrong word, but anyway, one of the areas of life that I like to write about is the natural world. <clears throat> and here is a poem called Heron, one of my favorite birds. No, I'll do gull, it's shorter. You carve your name with stretch of wind on wingtip. Scream your prayer across the sand, the new waves moving in to break on ancient rocks. The God that cannot be remembered, cannot be forgotten. That's it. So Emmanuel, I think you're very prolific. Exactly how many books have you actually published? Well, that's a very good question. 22. 22, wow. Yes. And which have, <laughs> which have gone best out of those 22? Which are the most successful and have sold well? The, uh, well, the only one I'm afraid that has sold well is not a book at all, it's a, it's, Two packs of riddles. Oh, the, you, do you know, I, I'm going to confess something to you now, uh, Emmanuel. I can't understand riddles at all. I've never got one. But they're very, very popular, oh, aren't they? I find that very hard to forgive. But anyway, I will. But they have sold Try. over. You, you ready for this? They have I'm sold oh, well over 30,000. Get out of here. Really? I, that's 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 absolutely true. Okay. I I have thir over thirty thousand of my riddle packs have sold. There's there's riddle pack one and riddle pack two, and they are published by a company in Portland, Pomegranate Publications, 
and they they have reps and they put them in bookstores and that, and they're on Amazon and so forth and they have sold well over thirty thousand. I am one of the most successful riddle writers in the world. I'm honoured. I will take <laughs> your reflected glory. Hey. Totally unexpected niche I, I find um, myself occupying in, this, in the niche, latter darling. stage of my life. <laughs> One of my first books was, was a book about the, the brilliant um, now dead uh, artist Harold Hitchcock. I wrote a book about him called Living in Light, which was published by um, a gallery in on the, the Californian coast where they were featuring his work. I did a book called um, An Extraordinary Man, which was a compilation of stories by Subud members of Baba, which is currently on sale, I think, through um, SPI, Subud Publications International. Did another book, which is a compilation of Subud members' stories of death and dying called Going Home, which I think is on Amazon. Um, I did another book called again, which has other people's stories in it. I think of these as kind of choral books. Uh, one of my best books, I was, I was told by a helper in Palo Alto, is um, Loving, Truths About Sex No One Told You. Um, <clears throat> which I still, yeah, I, I agreed with it. I think it's, it's one of my best books. Um, I, I have a fondness for what they call ekphrastic poetry, which is poetry written in conjunction with imagery. Um, two of those are books I wrote about the collage of S Sophia Garrard, an English uh, collage artist who lives in Canterbury in Kent. Um, and then I wrote another one about the drawings, the doodles, the surrealistic doodles, um, doodles of a lady called Hannah Custera, which is called Yesterday's Flycatcher, which I think is probably one of my most interesting and beautifully put together books. There's a lady called Nirel published, uh, did that, did the layout. Um, one of my best books of just poetry, I think, is a book called Someone. Another book is, um, Singing in the Car, another one is Old Man Talking, which is nature poetry. Um, there's a just, I've just done a book of riddles about music called I Bring You Music. There was another series called um, Rids for Kids, which Roby and Easty did, which we've already mentioned. Uh, there's, an, there's those two riddle packs. Um, and another book that I did was called The River, which was a book, a, a, a novel, an adventure novel, adventure story <clears throat> for kids, um, early teens, 11, 12, 13, 14, which kids absolutely loved, the ones who read it. That's on Amazon. And I'm also now looking for ways to launch a book, which is a full length fantasy novel for older teens called Crinolina. Currently I'm working on um, a book of, or two books, an ABC of imaginary birds and an ABC of imaginary animals. I'm and they are, illustrated, it, they are illustrated by a range of artists going from my seven-year-old granddaughter yeah. up to a wonderful artist called Amina Herman. Oh, I've heard of Amina Herman. And aren't you, yes. aren't you collaborating with, oh, what's his name? He's, he's married to a Greek, he lives in um, Athens. Help me. Ruby Ann Easty worked Ruby with me on my riddles for children called Rids right. for Picks. Yes. Rids for Picks, yeah, 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 yeah. Rids yeah. for Picks. And lastly, um, I am working on a, a screenplay about a young man who has a wife inside him. Ha! <laughs> wife. So I think my most successful recent um, book is An Old Man Talking to God, which I think you may have read. I've got it and I've read it, and I was going to You've ask you about it. it, but I don't need to now. 
it's going well, <laughs> is it? Everyone's right. absolutely ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you have you written a review for it on Amazon? He said no, challengingly. I no, I have. No, not. you haven't. No. So, well, I hope you'll um, you know take care of that within the next twenty four hours. Well, you'll be lucky. Um, I will try <laughs> when I'm good and ready. Okay, so Fine. Just, just, okay. Chill. just chill out, man. <laughs> Listen, there was some talk and all this stuff flying around that we were going to read The Quest. Do you remember The Quest? This is the book. Yes, I remember it well. I remember that wonderful cover. The Enemy Under and the Blanket. It, and the Blanket. And, and I think it's important to kind of just link in that you... We did some amazing performances in Lewis with your dialogues and your words. They were such fun. They were amazing. Yeah, the, uh, the strange, the strange aspect of that performance in Lewis was that, I mean, a lot of these monologues and dialogues were drawn more or less directly from my uh, experiences of marriage. We, we were living in Lewis, um, Southeast England, a very good friend of ours. Lucianne LaSalle, God bless her, one of the great LaSalle tribe, um, had this idea of doing a show in the Brighton Fringe Festival. And <clears throat> she wanted to do a show about um, heterosexual relationships, romantic relationships. And she had ideas for songs and for movement, but she wanted some words, some monologues and dialogues. <clears throat> so, I, I got down to writing those, drawing, as I said earlier on, from largely from my own experience as a married man and with women. And um, finally, and then we put, assembled a cast. So we had monologues, dialogues, songs, scenes. Um, we had a big hall, with, with, which was kind of all of these different parts, all these different events in the show took place at a slightly different spot with the audience kind of in between these various spots and um we did it and it was absolutely it was a wonderful show it, it, it just worked the whole way through and it was so successful and such fun to do that we did the same more or less the same show at least as far as the monologues and dialogues was concerned the following year in a smaller basement kind of area or a cellar in Lewis and um, the quest was one that um, Adrienne and I did in in both okay right <clears throat> Here we go. action so you're taking the car is that okay yeah that's fine well, because I can take the train, you know, if you no. rather I am. Uh... That's silly. You take the car. You need to feel free, don't you? Yes, I need to feel free. How long will you be gone? Don't ask. And you don't want me to ask where you're going? No, I'd rather you didn't. Or who you're going to visit? Right. And you don't want me to ask why you don't want me to ask any of these questions? Uh, no, go ahead. You can ask me that. Okay. Why don't you want me to ask any of these questions? Well, because I, I need a break. Because I, I need some space. I want to find out what's left of the me that has nothing to do with us, with you. That's all I want, some time for me. And I was hoping you'd understand and accept it without me having to explain. I was hoping you'd have the sense to let me go without having to ask a whole bunch of questions. So, if any of your friends call up and they invite you out to the pub, or how about a sauna next Saturday, 
I'm to tell them that you've gone off on a quest to rediscover the part of you that isn't anything to do with me and I don't know when you'll be back, right? Uh, tell them what you like. Might take months. Oh, I doubt it. Years even. Oh, come on. Which raises the question, how long am I prepared to wait while you rediscover that part of you that isn't anything to do with me? And what if, while I'm waiting for you to rediscover the part of you that isn't anything to do with me, I rediscover the part of me that isn't anything to do with you? What if we meet sometime in early November, say that, and we discover that the parts of us that we've rediscovered that aren't anything to do with each other have grown so big and so strong that the parts of us that have nothing to do with us have dwindled to nothing. Well, that's what happens. So be it. You know, I mean, it's no good looking for... I might the, uh, become a Buddhist. I might have silicon implants <laughs> or somebody else's baby. What? I might have put your stuff into storage and flown to Seattle. I mean, I think it's only fair. If you do your quest, then I do mine. Otherwise... My sense of who I am that isn't anything to do with you will be less developed than your sense of who you are that isn't anything to do with me. Which will be bad for our relationship. You know, lack of balance. <laughs> and anyway, I'm not one of your passive ladies from the myths waiting at home for her man to come back with the golden fleece or some equally useless article keeping horny young men at bay with her knitting needles. Why do you always turn everything into a bloody competition? I mean, I, you know, I just, just want a bit of time for myself. That's all. Fine. Feel <sighs> free. Good luck to you. Oh. Thank you. So, you're taking the car. Is that okay? Yes, that's fine. I'll take the train. Where? Don't ask. It was, it was a fun thing to do. It was brilliant. Yeah. And I, I had a very strange experience with this because um, sometime later I was at an airport saying hello or goodbye to Sherry, Forty and Tutti. And um, we were waiting for the plane and they said, well, we've got a quite a long time to wait. So we're going to do one of Emmanuel's dialogues. <laughs> really? Sherry and Tutti? Yeah. Brilliant. Which one did they do? I don't remember which one they did, but they did a pretty good job of it. <laughs> so anyway, there we are. That's that's my introduction. OK. So March the 19th, which is a Friday, a Zoom news featuring a whole bunch of people performing stuff by me. Thank you. See you then. <laughs>